Right. So uh, we'll move on to the next case. Uh, this is a 54-year-old gentleman with history of gradual painless loss of vision in the both uh, in both his eyes for the last 25 to 30 years. So he had a complaint of over two decades. Uh, he feels it's worsening over the last two years. He was diagnosed to have glaucoma. He was already on anti-glaucoma medications when he came to us. He was a non-hypertensive diabetic. Uh, he was non-alcoholic and non-smoker. His visual acuity was 20-25 N8, 20-30 N8, no RAPD. Uh, everything else was fine. Intraocular pressure, when we measured it, was okay. Uh, open angles, pachymetry, largely okay. And this was his optic disc. Now, uh, when we look at this optic disc and we try to apply the template that uh, Dr. Varshini was speaking to us about, there is a cup, yes, there's definitely a cup. Uh, but when you look at the rim of the cup, even beyond, uh, it is pale. So it's not just cupped, it is pale and cupped. And this is even better seen in the red free here where you can clearly see the uh, exaggeration of the normal uh, uh, dark reflex that we see temporally. A very similar appearance in the left eye. This was his visual field. So this is a classic centrocecal scotoma. This really is very, very unlikely to be glaucoma in presence of that kind of an optic disc. So that would give you a clue. So a gradual painless loss of vision, temporal pallor, centrocecal scotomas. You think of nutritional, toxic, or hereditary. Uh, we went ahead and investigated the patient. Uh, he was found to have fairly low levels of serum folate and B12. Uh, he was started on injectable and oral supplementation. Uh, we reviewed him in three months. I'm sorry, I don't have the repeat visual field. While the field effect was only marginally better, uh, his visual acuity, especially his near vision, came back to N6. Uh, the only uh, uh, point here that I want to stress on uh, is... Uh, uh, about this injectable. So we've been having a series of patients recently who don't do so well when you give oral supplementation. Many of them seem to have gastrointestinal malabsorption syndromes. So it would be worthwhile taking a gastro opinion and probably putting them on injectables because we've actually had some of them recover, even this gentleman with even a two decade old history with partial recovery. So that might be worth it. So we would suspect a nutritional cause in a gradual painless loss uh, with history of alcoholism, smoking, very obvious poor nutrition, bilateral temporal disc pallor and centrocecal scotomas. Uh, this is another case, uh, a 35 year old gentleman with history of decreased vision in both eyes over the last two months. First in the right eye followed a couple of weeks later by the left eye. Gradual progressive painless. He was diagnosed to have optic neuritis. He was treated already when he came to us with intravenous methylprednisolone, was on oral steroids with no improvement. Uh, we went over his history. There was some vague history of decreased vision in an uncle. Other than that, everything was fine. Visual equity counting fingers at 1 meter, 20 to 50 in the other eye. Both pupils were sluggish. And this is the fundus. So when he came to us first, if you really see, this is fairly unremarkable. Uh, it looked largely normal in the right eye. Left eye had mild pallor. He had undergone an MRI brain earlier, which was completely normal, no enhancement at all, no improvement at all with IVMP. So this got us thinking about, this is not a routine run-of-the-mill um, retrobulbar neuritis. We decided to revisit his history, went over in detail about drugs, medications, alcohol, absolutely nothing. This time when he came up, he said it was a maternal uncle who had, it was his mother's brother. So that sort of rang a bell. We went ahead and did a testing for LHON and he was positive for the 11778 mutation. So uh, this is extremely important. You ask for history in the maternal side, the mother's father, the mother's brother. It's usually a male because it's mitochondrial. And uh, we um, advise supplementation with coenzyme Q. Reviewed two months later, vision was status quo. But the fundus at this visit now started showing very obvious pallor. Uh, so family history is important. We need to think of hereditary optic neuropathy in an otherwise unexplained optic neuropathy. Young males with sequential vision loss uh, keep LHON as a differential. I think we'll uh, just have one more case with Vivek before we wrap up. We are out of time. You know, the next group was what I was supposed to, I thought, uh, actually, you know, I'll, I'll go to the another two groups, which is very interesting, as all of, we know that, you know, the, already Dr. Matali and, uh, uh, you know, the, Dr. Ganga has already covered, you know, what could be the post papilledema optic atropies. So, I'll just skip this. As we know that, you know, the IIH and intracranial space occupying lesion are one of the commonest. However, there could be, you know, the other entities where 
there could be a, a, a kind of obstructive hydrocephalus. So this was a case which, you know, like presented like this. There is a tortuosity with a gross optic disc pallor, you know, and uh, on MRI imaging what we found that, you know, there was a very rare interesting uh, entity that was, you know, <coughs> craniosynostosis with osteopetrosis and type 1 Arnold Chiari malformation, which was responsible for, you know, the uh, uh, optic atrophy. So take home from this, you know, like optic atrophy in uh, patients with, uh, you know, the papilloidema, you know, post papilloidema, post papilloidema optic atrophy, retrospective inspection is very important. You know, the history and previous documentation plays a vital role that warrants an early diagnosis and treatment to prevent the morbidity as well as mortality being, you know, the intracranial space occupying lesions could be a life threatening. Neuroimaging is a modality of choice for the diagnosis of post papilloidema optic atrophy. So now coming to this group, which is very important, most of the time, you know, like it can be missed being, you know, usually present in the children's as the first case, eight year old child, defective vision in both eyes since last three years. There was a history of jaundice at birth for which, you know, he had undergone the light therapy. But the important history that, that was clinching is there was a history of twins with, you know, there was some mental handicap. If you look at the fundus photograph, there is a diffuse disc pallor. It's sometimes very difficult to distinguish whether it is a glaucomatous or a non-glaucomatous. The child has fixing and following of light, the visual acuity. And there was a sluggish pupillary response in both the eyes. What we found on neuroimaging, there was a focal parieto-occipital cortical atrophy, which was suggestive of, you know, the sequel of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. Very similar, but little more elderly patients, 30 year old, again presented with, you know, the central pallor with a large size cuff. He has a exotropia as well. He presented with, you know, the vision of counting fingers since his childhood. Again on neuroimaging, there were bilateral occipital lobe atrophy with, you know, the left side, left sided porencephaly. There was an enlargement of lateral ventricle on the left side. So, which could manifest as, you know, the central optic disc pallor, which can mimic. And the last case, which is 43 year old, quite elderly patient. If you look at the history of this patient, you know, this patient was already diagnosed as, you know, the glaucoma patient undergone the HVF. He was on treatment for Timolol. But if you look at carefully, you know, what was the history which was clinching, you know, he has a premature delivery. There was a birth weight, which is a low birth weight child. He cried immediately after which the history was little doubtful. So it could be, you know, the delayed cry could be one of the uh, factor which where we can think of, you know, the neurodevelopmental anomaly. And the child had a history of seizures at the age of one year. So look at the disc. Again, the rim, it looks 360 degree normal. But here, the size of the cup, which is pale. That is, again, if you have a cursory look, you can always think of, are we dealing with, you know, the patients with HI? This patient had a visual acuity of 20 by 400. With correction, it was 20 by 25. So that was the reason which was misleading, you know, being a normal vision. Always, whenever the patient keep, keep on, you know, consulting different, uh, you know, the ophthalmologist, it was always turned out as it is a glaucoma. But... If you look at the fields also, again, it's very difficult to say that these are the only glaucomatous field. But if you look carefully, you know, they have a little bit kind of, they are respecting to the vertical line. And, and on neuroimaging, there was a bilateral occipital lobe infarcts. So which was again suggestive of, you know, the sequel of hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. So this was the last case, last group that is a methanol poisoning. This was a 50 year old male farmer by occupation presented with sudden loss of vision in both eyes for last six weeks and history of spurious intake of you know the adulterated alcohol so you can see there was a mild temporal pallor with counting finger vision and on neuroimaging there was you know the hyper intensities in the basal ganglia so after treatment with IVMP and oral steroid it has recovered to 2200 so I think we'll stop here with uh, short of time Does uh, anybody has a question or something? Okay, time is out.